Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, I want to talk about tic-tac-toe and not ordinary tic-tac-toe, I want to talk about it in such a manner that each and every programmer is able to design the winning logic of the tic-tac-toe. Now, I do totally understand that tic-tac-toe is a stupidly simple game, but it is also the fact that not each and every one of us is able to design us and definitely that's the case because uh, we know some of the programming languages, maybe C, C++, Python, Java, Ruby, uh, Angular, React, Android, iOS, but still when we are designing this particular game, there are some hurdles which always comes to us. Now, designing the game is the easy part because you just can align a few buttons and clicking on that button, you can change the image to simply a zero or a cross. But what's interesting is how we design the winning logic of this game. Now, the winning logic behind this game is absolutely simple. I would call it as ridiculously simple. But the problem is that even if the winning logic is just composed of few AND operator and a couple of IF and ELSE, that's pretty much it. Still, a lot of people still face that, how am I gonna write the code for this winning logic? I'm not able to even think. So help me how I can think and process this information. First and foremost, it's totally okay that if you are not able to critically think and are able to design logic because it happens to each and every programmer. Some people like to accept it, most simply like to deny it. But it's not the case. Every single one of us face some trouble while designing this game for the very first time. So first, what you need to do is stop thinking about winning the game. Our brain is trained that this game is ridiculously simple and our brain just keep on switching into the winning logic. So instead of understanding the game itself, we try to move on to the phase where we are just trying to win the game. So stop there for a moment and let me explain you how you can design a winning logic in any programming language, whether that's Java, JavaScript, Angular, iOS, Android, whatever it is. After watching this video, you will fully understand that how we can write the code for the winning logic in tic-tac-toe. Now, in order to explain it further, I have to move to my iPad. So let's try to understand this tic-tac-toe game here. So I'm using my iPad and first and foremost, we're gonna be deleting a lot of stuff. So just focus on understanding the stuff. So how does a tic-tac-toe game look like? It has a box, we have already seen that kind of stuff. And in the box, we have two, this kind of stuff. And then we have got two, this kind of stuff. Okay, that's the very easy stuff. And we have played this game too many times. That's why you're focusing too much on winning. So let's try to understand that we can call that each box that we are having this box is actually a button. Let's try to understand this. So for uh, easier understanding purpose, I'm gonna call this as button. Now this button can have only three states. So usually people like to call this straight as these states as zero, one, and two. By the state term, I simply means uh, each of them is a variable and each variable can have only three values. Now some people like to call them as simply a zero, one, and two. And internally they decide that zero is gonna be like empty, nobody has clicked on it. One means cross and two means zeros. Now I find it really, really confusing. So I don't use it at all. In fact, uh, I'm gonna just delete that part of stuff. What I like to do in this particular case, I like to give it the actual value. So I regularly like to use strings. So first one is gonna be empty. So I'm gonna call these buttons as literally empty. And then uh, we're gonna use crosses and zeros. So just call it as a cross. Or in case you're using any colors, that's fine too. So just call it as uh, red for cross. And simply, similarly, we can use like, let's just say green for zeros. So there we go, zero, terrible handwriting. I do totally understand that. So this is the basic stuff. So first thing that we have learned here is every button is going to have three state, empty, red, uh, and uh, zero, or empty cross. You got the point. Okay, so let's delete that part. Okay, this is totally clear and we understand that part. Let's move back and switch what is how we can play this game. Okay, that part is clear. Now also I would like to name each of these buttons. Now since I'm a programmer, I start to count from zero. So we're gonna name them as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, that's pretty easy stuff, understandable. Now let's try to play this game for once and then we are going to understand how the winning logic actually works. So let's go up and I'm gonna choose first and foremost red. So let's just say red actually played here as cross. Okay, that's fine. Now for a moment, stop thinking about winning and let's just say the other guy is playing a little bit dumb and he also played here, that is zero. 
Okay, that's fine. Now comes up the red guy again. He played up here and he marked an X here again. Now, technically what is happened, your brain is actually programmed to write a zero on position two, but we are not gonna do that. We are gonna understand this game. So let's just say the other person is playing here. Now what is going to happen is the red guy is going to play up here and there we go. He got his first win. Now let's try to write a code for this particular situation and then we can easily figure it out that how we can write logic. So uh, we are going to simply use another color, let's just say blue. So obviously I want to check this. So I'm going to use an if statement here. Now this if statement is going to help us to evaluate and a couple of ands as well. Like we just don't want to compare uh, uh, one condition, there are multiple conditions going on in here. So I'm going to call this as position zero, position one and position two. So first and foremost, I want to check that if the item at position zero is empty or not. And I want to check if it is uh, not empty. That's my first condition. I want to check it. Okay, that's it. Really simple. And if that condition is uh, like fulfilled, uh, that means somebody has played at position zero. I want to check a few more conditions. Let's go ahead and do that. So obviously we are gonna use an AND operator there. Pretty simple stuff. Now what I want to do is I want to check, what is the check? I simply want to check that if at position zero, whatever the value is, it can be, uh, it can be red, uh, definitely we have checked it's not empty so that's the one thing now the two situation that remains in front of us is either it is red or it is green so I want to check if the value at position 0 is equal to value at position 1 so that's my first check so I'm checking uh, whether this POS 1 0 is equal to POS 1 okay I want to check one more thing here. So I'm going to just put an and another condition that I want to check. And this time I want to check whether the position, whatever the value is at one is also equal to value at position two. And if that's the condition, that's my winning logic because if all, if the first value is not empty and the first value is equal to second value and second value is equal to third value, that means you have got a winner here. So in that case, I can just print out a message, simply print a win message. I'm going to just call it as winning message. So that's my very first and very simple case scenario. So what can be the other place where user can win? And writing code for that is ridiculously simple because we are now checking for post zero, post one and post two. So how many position do actually we have to check? And that is really simple. First and foremost, we need to check up this one. So that is a winning streak. This is also a winning streak. So you have to check at three, four and five. You also have to check at six, seven and eight. That is a winning streak. Now you have to check for this streak as well, which is 0, 3, and 6. You have to check at this streak as well, which is 1, 4, and 7. You have to also check for this streak, which is 2, 5, and 8. You also have to check diagonally, so we have to go this way also. So you have to check at 0, 4, and 8 as well. And uh, finally, this one as well you have to check. So that is 6, 4, and 2, or 2, 4, and 6, however you want to say that. And that's it. You have to write exact same if a statement for these values as well. And there we go. You have got your TikTok day, TikTok tech game for winning logic. And this logic can be applied for JavaScript, for Ruby, for Python, for OS, iOS apps, for Android apps. And that's pretty much it. So now if you're designing any tic-tac-toe game with this similar kind of logic, let me know in the comment section as well. I'd love to see what you are creating with this video. I hope this video is explaining all the things like ridiculously simple way. Yep, it's that simple. Now in case you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comment section as well. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button because I keep up coming with these kind of amazing video at this channel. Hit that subscribe and let your friends know that there is an amazing programming channel at YouTube. So tell your friends also. That's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.